OK, folks. He's as big as Elvis Presley in the PNG and played with three <laughs> AFL clubs for 238 games. Please make him welcome, Mel Michael! <laughs> welcome, brother. As I said, you're born in the PNG, <laughs> recruited from Morningside in the QFL, the Queensland Football League. QAFL. Miss, is it? Yeah. Missed being drafted by the Bears at the time, recruited to Collingwood as a rookie, three premierships at your second club, Brisbane Lions, then a premature retirement, and then you ended up at Essendon. Have I left anything out? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty much it in a, in a nutshell. That's sensational. Three premierships and, uh, of course, playing alongside uh, yeah. Chrissy Johnson there. Yeah. And... Uh, the one that baffled me and baffled most of us, brother, was ending up at Essendon after you'd retired. They must offer you quite a lot of money to come out of retirement. Yeah, I remember at the time we opened up the, uh, the boot of the car and it was just full of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Sheeds will hate me saying that because he, he, he always says, when people ask, you always tell them the truth. Honestly, I, I did finish up at Brisbane. I was 29 at the time, going on 30, and I uh, was looking to do some uh, work in New Guinea. Retirement fund or something on the way out? No, no Listen. retirement fund. I actually had a year to run on on the contract to Brisbane, but um, Essendon contacted me and said, look, we will be flexible with, um, with your work in football. In I have made reference year. to the PNG, and, and I was trying to be funny about it, but in all seriousness, you are a very well-known and respected person in your homelands, in your country there, and they tell me that you're as popular as the Prime Minister, and that's a true story, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't say as popular as him, but... Um, Come on, We were over in uh, PNG, went and done the Kokoda trial, uh, the Brisbane Lions, and we're over there in the hotel the night before. And uh, little we know, we're sitting there. We had I had no idea, but uh, here comes Mel popping up on the TV with on a biscuit commercial. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> Can you talk us through that. I I was sponsored by Arnott's Biscuits, and I and I ran a couple of. Um, commercials on there and also did a, a sports program every Thursday night. So yeah, my profile up in New Guinea was pretty big. Pretty big. Hey look Mel, it's great to see you brother. I remember you as a 17 year old kid when I was at the Bears and uh, when I come back with a broken jaw I played one game in the, uh, for Morningside in the, right. and I played with you and at the time I was very impressed with you and I said this kid will play AFL one day but at the time there was three guys uh, in Brisbane that the Brisbane uh, Bears or the Lions had picked first. There was a guy by the name of Jason Ekamanis, there was a guy by the name of Mal Michael, and a guy by the name that went to Geelong, um, that played with Kedron Grange. Bezel, Bezel, Clint Bezel. At the time, they only hit picked one, they picked Acker, but gee, you and Clint Bezel went on to have a great career, mate. You had a great career, well done on your career. Yeah, thanks, Gil. Well, we just see you there in, the, in a Collingwood uh, jumper there. Of course, you're part of a very, very famous game. And, of course, we heard before Gilly talking about Tony Lockett as a young kid playing Teal Cup. But uh, you played on Tony Lockett when he broke the league record. <laughs> I did, thank you. <laughs> he got the goal that uh, took him straight past Gordon Coventry. <laughs> thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> you stood yeah, on the mark very, very well that day. Oh, one of the best of all time, actually. <laughs> yeah, I remember that day, and there's the highlights there, but... Um, he was a beast of a man. <laughs> um, and what people don't realise is he was very quick. So um, I, I was uh, a skinny, wiry kid at, the, in, at that stage. I think it was 1999. And um, I thought, well, I'm not going to wrestle him, so I'll stand behind him. But he was so fast that he could just lead out and, he, and he yeah. would, he'd take a, a continuum marks on the lead. So, I mean, there's, no, there's, there's a reason why he's a current record holder. And um, I guess that was a, a day that I guess I'm, I'd say I'm proud that I was part of it, <laughs> part of history. But... Um, it always gets brought up. Mm -hmm. We were just talking backstage before about your, your former teammates, obviously Jono, Whitey, um, who else? Uh, Scott Boys. P Scott Boys, Pikey. Of those guys, who provided the most laughs out there on the field? Because they were all pretty fiery as well <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> when we yeah. used to play against you guys. Yeah, no, there was, there's some really strong characters in, in that uh, mix of players. But I, I've always liked Martin Pike on the field. Mm. Um, he just had this real dry wit and humour and... <laughs> Um, he also had a way of just telling an opposition player how bad he was at playing football <laughs> <laughs> in the nicest possible way. That, and Chris, you know Pikey really well too. He's, mm -hmm. he's a really uh, good, genuine black off the field as well. Mel, when I, I left the Brisbane Bears and I gave number two over to Chrissy Johnson when he became the Lions. Now, I didn't really get to know Chrissy. Tell us, <laughs> you have you got some dirt on him? Because <laughs> he, always got, he always seems to get something to me that I... 
that I don't know about. But anyway, like have you got any dirt on him? Tell no, us something. Tell us a funny <laughs> story, he's please. He's a smiling assassin, isn't he? But <laughs> I, I love playing alongside John A. He was, uh, I've always said, um, I've even said publicly on, on a record that he was in full flight. He was one of the most exciting sure. players um, that I've played alongside because um, I'm pretty sure like, he took the back pocket position to he a new did. level. And, and made it a very attacking player. Paying but... some money tonight, Chris? No, well, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the compliments, Mel. We really appreciate it because Mel was always picking up my men when I was taking up off the ground. So. But, Mel, playing down at the last line of the fence, you know, you, you went through your, uh, your time at, uh, at Collingwood, at Brisbane, as well as Essendon. You played on some terrific full forwards. Obviously, Plugger is probably the one that probably gets the tick above uh, most of them. But who was the one that really troubled you and you just couldn't hold down so much? Yeah, as you said, I played on some fantastic players and... Um, you know, sometimes when you're, uh, when you're coming up uh, on the weekend, you can think, oh, I've got a bit of an easy game this week. <laughs> For me, it was never easy. I always had to play on a really good player. But I guess the player that caused me a lot of grief was Barry Hall. Uh, he was the first player that, that used to run on. Yeah. Just to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we heard Mill earlier on saying that he had trouble playing on these, these new aerobic players. And, and Barry was the first um, full forward that I'd come across that didn't really play conventional full forward. He used to run around, he'd, he'd go up to the wing, he'd run across the other side, so yeah. um, not being an, an aerobic beast that I was, I was more power. Okay. Um, that so so did, he st did he change the game, you reckon? Because that's a fair point. From a full forward's point of view, yes. That's interesting. Yeah. Mal, can I ask you this? KB mentioned how you were famous for playing on plug when he kept you 1,300 goal, but there was another incident that you were involved in which has become pretty famous <laughs> over the years, and it was the point. Yes. You are famous behind. Uh, let's roll the footage and have a look at this, because it's quite funny, actually. There you go. Kicks a goal, but you're kicking it in their end. Their end of the ground. So what yeah. happened there? Uh, I think... <laughs> <laughs> you kicked at the wrong end. Point. What a beautiful kick, too. <laughs> You were just that frustrated you never kicked the goal, so I thought, well, I'm I reckon today that break. would be a deliberate rush behind it. I, 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 think, so. <laughs> I think so, KB, but um, we, we joke around saying that Michael Voss had, has the greatest point assist in history there <laughs> with that kick. But, yeah, I was probably a dis disgruntled defender, and uh, we considered a few goal, rushed, uh, goals on the line where we should have rushed the ball through. On well, the, KB, that's right. KB, have you ever played in, in a game where a bloke's got the ball head to the centre and he's... He's just taken on the pack and he's kicked at 60 yeah. metres and he's kicked it the wrong way. Kevin Sheedy did that uh, <laughs> yeah. playing for us against Collingwood and uh, Francis Burke wasn't very happy because he kicked it straight to his man. Oh. <laughs> so, now, at times, at times, we were very serious <laughs> at the Brisbane Lions, uh, Grant and uh, the rest of the panel, very, very serious. But there was one time, Mel, where we weren't so serious, where yourself uh, went up to Jamie Charman, our ruckman, and told him he was playing in a certain position. Can you elaborate to the, uh, to the uh, viewers on what, you, uh, what sort of games you played on, Jamie? Charmo on that day. Oh, look, look Charmo, he was a great guy around the club and good for morale, but I think we were playing against your mob at the time, Port Adelaide, mm. in, at Footy Park, and I saw Charmo, and as Lee was addressing us, I think it was three-quarter time, he, his eyes were going all over the place, and he was off with the fairies, so I knew he didn't listen to a word that Lee had said in the three-quarter time speech, so, or the address, so when we went out, I, I went and stood in the ruck position, and I was like, you know, huffing and puffing, getting ready to ruck, and Jamie's come over, and he's gone, oh, shit, like, um... Mel must be in the ruck. Where am I meant to be? So he starts running off to, <laughs> to see Craig. Yeah. Oh, to see Craig Lambert. He was the board man, and he was a bit confused after that. And then we <laughs> talked about right. it. that's the whole thing's there because we're going to go to our next game. Gilbert Hawthorne taking on Brisbane in Tassie on Saturday Harbour. Yeah, the Hawks hailed back Langford. He hasn't played a lot of footy uh, in the last six weeks. Oh, well, not in the seniors anyway. C Sicily out the side is Hodgie with that suspension. Papalio's with, with that ankle. They're going to miss him and should make this. But Gunston Norman! Uh, stop having a go at me, Johnny. You're having a go at me all night. Anyway, for the Lions, Rich, Clark, Beasley. West has been uh, met, uh, Red was out with the groin and uh, Brian. Has he, John Arnold? All right, let's just get a, a, a selection on this game because we're going to run out of time. Hawthorne or Brisbane? Um, well, Sean, obviously, we know who you're going for. Mal, you played at quite a few clubs. Any love for Brisbane? Yeah, a lot of love for Brisbane. I was up there a couple of weeks ago to see them play against the Suns, but um, Hawthorne have way too much at stake and they need to 
go into their finals campaign with a couple of uh, good victories, and I still reckon they're the team to beat in September as well. But okay. might support them. Hawthorne for Mel. Chrissy? Uh, yeah, I think the Hawks are going to come back after uh, the loss to Port Adelaide uh, last week. I think it's going to be tough. I don't think a Brisbane team has won down at Tassie before, but uh, again, Palopa blah, 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 is out, isn't he? <laughs> 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 well, I'm not a wordsmith, mate, but uh, I'm going to have to go with the Hawks. Hawks for Chris, KB. Yeah. The mighty hook. Mighty hook. Mighty Kelly. Hook. I can't help with my tongue gets in the road of this <laughs> speaking. Anyway, um, no, Hawthorne, Burgoyne, 42 touches. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's what I like about Chris. Player for Brisbane, three premierships, but he picks against them sometimes. Well, I can't help that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going for Hawthorne too, because Short said he's going to kick six goals. Let's go to the next game, and it's Geelong taking on Collingwood Friday night at the home of footy. Mighty yeah, Kelly, that's a name we haven't seen this year. Lock Menzel, he's good to see him back, but Caddy's out with a knee, and Hall and Smith has been unmetted for the Mighty Pies. Brown, Sandberg, out of sight. Katie, I know you don't like this, but TV has been rested. They won't make the finals, and they've got two games to go. Somebody tell me and please explain. Anyway, Frost also admitted. Sinclair, 50 games. I can't believe people are saying how disappointed they are with Collingwood. They were never going to make the eight this year, so why are people going on and on about it? All right, we'll just get tips in, OK? <laughs> Geelong and Collingwood. Tip. Yes. No, I'll go uh, Geelong, I reckon. Uh, Geelong for sure. Now. Yeah, I, I feel that the, the wheels have fallen off for Collingwood, and I think they've called drinks, so I'm going to tip Geelong this week. Geelong. Uh, good to see Scharenberg back in the team. Uh, good, real uh, hard defender that can run and carry the ball. He's a real talent. Uh, hadn't said that, I think the Cats will still win. Cats, Chris, KB. It's a great story that Daniel Menzel is back in the side after yes. four knee Ricos, and I think everyone in the football world wishes him well yep. because that, that is a, a fantastic comeback. You know, the trials and tribulation that boy's yeah. been through. But I, I think he'll come back into a winning side. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Long for KB, Gil. Nah, look, Geelong will be really disappointed with that draw last week. They want to, they've still got a chance. That's why they're going to win, because they have to win if they want to play finals. Geelong. Yep. And Geelong for me too, Gilly. Yeah. Mel, time to let you go, brother. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Put your hands together once more. <laughs> for three-time Premiership player Mel Michael, champion. Well, let's take a very short break. Shelly Ware coming up next.